Here is an example of excellent problem that you frequently see on the test. You are presented with the series of shapes, and you need to determine which of the following shapes comes next in the sequence. You have choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look at this picture to see if you can come up with the answer. Give yourself 10 to 15, maybe 20 to 30 seconds. This is about as much time as you get on the test. You can pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. Did you make your choice? Let's go ahead and continue so we can get to the correct solution together. As you might have figured it out by now, the key to solving this challenge is to understanding what exactly is happening here in these pictures. And the answer is that we are drawing the miniature house using straight line. And the most important point that we are tracing this house continuously until the house is built. Once you understand this part of the problem, it's easy to solve. Let's draw this house step by step. There are eight lines in the final house. Let's draw all eight lines one by one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now having this information handy, we can go back to the original problem and easily see the solution. And the correct answer here is choice A. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is an interesting question which validates how well you do planning of your day-to-day -day work. Mary spends one-third of her 24-hour day at work. Meetings take one-fourth of her workday. How many hours does she spend in meetings? You have four different choices. Choice A – 1 hour and 30 minutes. Choice B – 2 hours. Choice C – 2 hours and 30 minutes. And choice D – 3 hours. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe a bit longer, depending how well you typically solve these types of problems. Ready or not, let's go ahead and solve this challenge together. As you might be well aware, full day has 24 hours. Mary's working hours are very typical. They represent one-third of the full day, which is 8 hours, and we calculate it by multiplying 24 by one-third, or actually dividing 24 by 3. Meetings take one-fourth of her workday. So to calculate how much time she spends in meetings, we need to multiply 8 hours by one-fourth, and the result is 2 hours. So the correct answer is choice B, 2 hours. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. Here is the cool question which is frequently used in the test. You are presented with three expressions. Circle with the dot inside plus another circle plus another circle equals 48. In the second expression, you add square plus circle and the result equaled 40. And in the third expression, you divide square by the diamond and the result is equal to. So you need to calculate the diamond. You are presented with four different choices. Choice A, 6. Choice B, 12. Choice C, 18. And choice D, 24. Can you do the math? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe 20 to 30 seconds, depending how quickly you are with the math. Ready or not, I am moving forward and going to reveal you how to do the calculation and solve this particular problem. If you think about it, the symbols that are presented for this problem are no different to X, Y, and Z that we so used to in math. So let's look at the first expression from that standpoint. You see that the value of circle can easily be calculated. We do it by dividing 48 by 3, and the result is equal 16. So circle with the dot inside equals 16. In the next step, we need to calculate the square. Square equals 40 minus the circle, which equals 40 minus 16, and the result equals 24. And in the last step, we need to calculate the diamond. Diamond equals square divided by 2, 
which equals 24 divided by 2, and the result equals 12. So the correct answer is choice B, 12. Hopefully you've nailed this question on your own, and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is a very interesting problem that you might frequently get on the test. You need to determine the next item in the sequence. You're presented with the sequence of large squares. Each large square contains nine small squares inside, and small squares are of the different color. You need to determine next item in the sequence, and you have four different choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe longer, maybe 20 to 30 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Did you figure it out? Let's go ahead, move forward to get to the correct solution together. As always, my advice to you, look for patterns. And determining the pattern is key to solving this particular problem. What you need to know to answer this particular question is that blue shape moves within the row of the larger shape. In each row, blue shape moves from left to right, one step at a time. And once blue shape reaches the end of the row on the right, it reappears on the left. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And now, here's the practice problem for you. You're presented with the chart that shows average price of cryptocurrency. And this chart shows the average price for each month from January to May. You need to calculate what is the highest approximate percentage price increase between two consecutive months. And you're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 60%, choice B, 70%, choice C, 80%, and choice D, 90%. If you know the answer, please make sure to post it in the comment section of this video so I can give you the feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck! Here's a cool question which you frequently see on the test. You're presented with two cubes. One cube has side length equal one unit, and second cube is a larger cube, and it has side length equals three units. So the question is, how many small cubes can fit into the large cube? And you have four different choices. Choice A, nine. Choice B, 18. Choice C, 27. And choice D, 81. Do you know the answer? Give yourself a few moments to calculate it. Maybe 20 to 30 seconds. This is about as much time as you get in the real test. Ready or not, let's go ahead and get to the correct solution together. To solve this challenge, you need to visually imagine how many small cubes can fit into one side of the larger cube. And the answer is that three small cubes can fit on each side of the large cube. And since cube is three-dimensional, the number of small cubes that can fit into the large cube can be calculated using the formula. 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3, which is equal 3 cube, that's where the word cube might be coming from, which equals 27. Since cube is three-dimensional, the number of small cubes that can fit into the large cube can be calculated using the formula. 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3 equals 3 cube equals 27. So the correct choice here is choice C, 27. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. It is almost guaranteed that you will get question like this on every test. You're presented with the sequence of numbers and you need to determine the next number in the sequence. In this case, the numbers are 2, 10, 30, 68, 130, and the next number is missing. Can you determine what comes next in the sequence? You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 216. Choice B, 218. Choice C, 220. And choice D, 222. 
Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer. Give yourself 20 to 30 seconds. That's about as much time as you get in the real test. Ready or not, I'm moving forward so we can get to the correct solution together. When dealing with sequence questions, my recommendation to you is always look for patterns. And to determine the answer in this case, we need to use the pattern n cube plus n. So it starts with the first number, which is equal to, and it was calculated as one cube plus one equals two. Next number was calculated as two cube plus two equals 10. The following number was calculated as three cube plus three equals 30. Then four cube plus four equals 68. Five cube plus five equals 130 which means that the missing number should be calculated as 6 cubed plus 6 and the result would be equal 222. So the correct answer here is choice D, 222. Hopefully you've nailed this question on your own and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's the cool simple question which is frequently used to test mental math capabilities. There is an unknown number you need to determine. One was added to this number, then two was subtracted from the result, and then it was multiplied by three, and then divided by four. The result is six. What is the unknown number? You have four different choices. Choice A, six. Choice B, eight. Choice C, nine. Choice D, 12. Can you determine the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe 20 to 30 seconds if you need more time. Ready or not, I am going to continue, reveal the correct answer as well as solution on how to solve these types of challenges. The best way to solve these types of challenges is to reverse the calculation by solving the problem backwards. So what we can do, we can multiply 6 by 4, then divide by 3, add 2 and subtract 1, and the result of these calculations is 9. Let's check to make sure it's correct, which is another good idea to do on the test. Let's put in parentheses 9 plus 1 minus 2, close parentheses, then multiply the result by 3, divide by 4, and the result will be equal to 6. So the correct choice here is choice C, 9. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And now, here's the practice question for you. You need to calculate which item comes next in the sequence. You're presented with the series of numbers 2, 10, 30, 68, 130, and you need to calculate which number comes next. You have four different choices. Choice A, 216. Choice B, 218. Choice C, 220. Choice D, 222. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 20 to 30 seconds. Maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. If you figured it out, please make sure to post your answer in the comments so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. There is a very high chance that you will see this type of question on the test. You're presented with three by three matrix. This matrix contains different shapes inside. In our case, the matrix contains triangles, pentagons and cubes. You have two spaces that are missing the shape and you need to select from four possible choices. Choices A, B, C and D. Do you see the solution? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds. Maybe give yourself 20 to 30 seconds. Most likely you will not get any more time on the real test. Ready or not, let's continue and get to the correct solution together. To solve these types of challenges, my advice to you is always look for patterns. And there are multiple patterns present here in this particular challenge. 
If you will detect and will use at least one of the patterns, you will be able to find solution to this challenge. The first patterns is that the shapes lines are in order 3, 6 and 9 lines. Let me clarify. Triangle has 3 lines, pentagon has 5 lines and cube has 9 lines. Second pattern is that the small circle inside the shape alternatively rotates from being inside the shape to being outside of the shape. And then the last but not the least pattern is that the black circle outside of the shape also changes its location. So if you follow the pattern and look closely at the possible choices, you will calculate that the correct answer to this challenge is choice C. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's an interesting question you may need to know not just for the test, but also if you're trying to rent the house. Five college students together rented a house. One of them decided to move out earlier and now their rent would be $260 higher for each remaining tenant. What is the cost of the total rent, considering the rent is shared equally among students? And you're presented with four different choices. Choice A, $5,200. Choice B, $3,120. Choice C, $2,600. And choice D, $2,340. Give yourself 20 to 30 seconds, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Let's go ahead and solve this challenge together. One of the easiest way to solve this challenge is to create a formula. Let's start by defining a variable and we will define this variable as S, which would represent an initial split trend for five students. So using this formula, we can calculate the total house rent as 5 multiplied by S, which means that after one student left, the total house rent could also be calculated as 4 multiplied and then the value in parentheses S plus $260. Using both approaches, we can create an expression. 5 multiplied by S equals 4 multiplied and then the value in parentheses S plus $260. Once we simplify it, we'll get to the equation 5s minus 4s equals $1,040, which means that the s equals $1,040, which represents initial one student trend. To calculate total house rent, we need to multiply 5 by $1,040 and the result will be $5,200. So the answer is choice A, $5,200. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar Here is the cool problem, which is easy to understand, but might be a little tricky to solve. The box has 15 marbles of green, yellow and orange colors. There are 7 times more of green marbles than yellow. How many orange marbles does the box have? You have 4 different choices. Choice A, 5. Choice B, 7, choice C, 8, and choice D, 9. Can you calculate the answer? Or guess it? Or find out? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. Interesting problem, don't you think? To solve this type of problems, let's separate facts from the formulas. We have two facts. We have 15 total marbles and marbles are of three different colors, green, yellow and orange. And the formula that we are presented with is that there are seven times more of yellow marbles than the green marbles. How does it help us? With this type of information, we can easily build the calculations and we will base our calculation base off of yellow marbles. The calculations will be yellow marbles plus 7 multiplied by yellow marble plus orange marbles equals 15. Because 15 is a relatively small number, we can start guessing how many yellow marbles are in there. Our ability to solve this challenge 
is based off of the fact that there is a very small number of total marbles. If we can optimize this formula and simplify it, we can come up with the formula that 8 yellow marbles plus however many orange marbles equals 15. So the question is, how many yellow marbles can there be in total? Can there be two yellow marbles? No, because if we will multiply 8 by 2, we will get to the total of 16 marbles, which is greater than the 15, which is the current total number of marbles. Based on this information, the box cannot have more than one yellow marble. And if there is only one yellow marble, there is going to be seven green marbles, because we already have a formula that number of green marbles is calculated by multiplying seven to the number of yellow marbles. So the only thing that's left is calculating how many orange marbles are out there. And we can easily calculate it by using the formula 8 plus x equals 15. So the x is calculated by subtracting 8 from 15. The x equals 7. The correct answer here then is choice B, 7. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's a very interesting problem, which tests not just your math skills, but also your cognitive ability skills. First and second bookshelves together have 80 books. First and third bookshelves together have 60 books. Second and third bookshelves together have 40 books. How many books are in there on each shelf? You have four different choices. For the first, second, and third bookshelves, in the choice A, you have 40, 40, and 20. In choice B, 50, 30, and 10. In choice C, 30, 50, and 10. And in the choice D, 55, 25, and 15. Do you see the answer? Can you calculate it? Can you? Or maybe you cannot. Maybe you can use some other tricks to solve this challenge. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe 20 to 30 seconds by pausing this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Ready or not, I am going to move forward so we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. What's interesting about this problem is that there is no easy formula you can come up with. Maybe you're different, at least this is how it was in my case. So if you can come up with the formula, please make sure to post it in the comment section of this video. But what I did, I started looking at the facts. And the facts are, is that on the first and second bookshelves, we have 80 books. On the first and third bookshelf, we have 60. On the second and third, we have 40. And what's interesting about this fact is that each bookshelf is presented here twice. First is twice, second is twice, and then the third bookshelf also appears in this calculations twice. So what we can do here, we can calculate doubled number of books on all three bookshelves. We can do it by adding up 80 plus 60 plus 40 and the result will be equal to 180. Because 180 is the double number of books, we can calculate just the total of books on all three shelves. We can do it by dividing 180 by 2 and the result is 90 and now we can calculate the number of books on each and every shelf. So having this information handy and looking at the facts, we can calculate the number of books on each individual shelf. For example, the number of books on the first shelf can be calculated by subtracting 40 from 90 and the result will be 50. The number of books on the second shelf can be calculated by subtracting 60 from 90 and the result will be 30. And the number of books on the third shelf can be calculated by subtracting 80 from 90 and the result will be 10. So the correct answer here is choice B. There are 50 books on the first shelf, 30 books on the second shelf and 10 books on the third shelf. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to solve similar challenges on the test. Here's the cool question that you frequently get on the test. 
you're presented with four different letters and you need to guess the word using all letters presented. The letters we have are W, O, B and L. Can you guess the word? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Ready or not, let's go ahead and reveal the solution. The correct answer here is ball, which is spelled as B O W N L. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And now here's the question for you to practice. You're presented with the pie chart of United States energy consumption. Consumption consists of five different parts, natural gas, coal, nuclear, renewables, as well as petroleum. The ratio between natural gas, petroleum, coal, nuclear power, and renewables is 8 to 6 to 4 to 3 and to 3. The total consumption for energy is $3 billion. So how much in the United States dollars was consumed in form of petroleum? You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, $510 million. Choice B, $610 million. Choice C, $750 million and choice D, $600 million. Can you calculate the answer? Give yourself 20 to 30 seconds and post your calculated answer in the comment section of this video so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck! Here's one of my favorite questions and it is my favorite because it is so unusual. You are presented with the pyramid. Pyramid contains five different layers. If we go from the top to bottom, you have a question mark. This is the number that you need to uncover. The next layer contains numbers 24 and 28. Layer below this contains numbers 10, 12 and 14. Next layer has 4, 5, 6 and 7. And the last layer has numbers 3, 1, 4, 2 and 5. You are presented with four different choices for the missing number. Choice A, 55. Choice B, 56. Choice C, 57. And choice D, 60. Do you see the answer? You will be surprised how simple it is to get to the answer when we go to the next step. Give yourself 5, 10, maybe 15 seconds to see if you can calculate and get to the correct answer. Did you figure it out? Let's continue and see how we can get to the correct solution together. Well, here, to be honest, I tried to trick you. I went in describing numbers from top to bottom, but in reality, you should be looking at the numbers from bottom to the top. If we start from the bottom row, for example, with numbers 3 and 1, you see that the sum of 3 and 1 will add up to 4. But then it gets trickier. If we go from the second row to the third row, you see that the 4 and 5 does not necessarily add up in 10. 4 and 5 adds up in 9, and then you need to increment it by 1. If you go to the next layer, you need to increment it by 2. And then in the final row, you need to increment it by 3. So the correct answer here is choice 55. Let's recap. Starting with the bottom row, the sum of two squares results in the number in the next row. For example, 2 plus 5 equals 7. However, as each level continues, the sum increases by 1. For example, 4 plus 5, we need to increment and add 1 to get to 10. So the answer is calculated by adding up 24 plus 28 plus 3, which would be equal to 52 plus 3 and would be equal to 55. The correct answer here is choice A, 55. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thank you for your endorsement, support and patronage. Please also check out additional resources in the description section of this video. I also encourage you to check resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net. Please leave your feedback, corrections or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.